Hey everybody, Jose Gardner here with Long Range Tactics. Today we're gonna to be continuing my little vlog series called My Build, where today I'm gonna to be going over how I spec'd out my personal hunting rifle. Stay tuned. All right, so as I mentioned, this is my personal hunting rifle and I'm just gonna go over a few aspects. Like I mentioned in the initial video, if you wanna go back and find that, it's uh, my precision rifle, uh, my precision competition rifle, um, and it should be here on our channel, so go check that out. But I talk about, um, not exactly a review of the rifle, but just all the components and the little um, nuances or little uh, features that made me pick what I did for the purpose-driven rifle. So that's my match rifle. I'll have one about my training rifle you can check out. This is my hunting rifle. So we're gonna dive right in. Um, if we start at the core, just like I did on the last one, it, this one is once again on an impact. So this is a hunting build. I want it to be lighter, as light as makes sense. Um, I'm not a seven pound rifle kind of guy. I still want a little bit of meat to it and I want all the functionality, even if, even if it means getting up into that 10, 11 pound range instead of you know the seven or eight pound range. So my impact, it is a little chunky, it's a little heavy, but it works. Yeah, I rely on it fully, wholeheartedly. I can get the pre-fit barrels for it. So anyways, this is the Impact 737R, except with a Magnum bolt face still in short action. So the gun is done in a 6.5 PRC. So this is my preferred barrels barrel. So if you see a little closer there, I've got some pretty nice fluting work done. Um, so boring rifles chambered this up for me, a 1.8 twist, and this is their 750 straight taper. I really liked that, um, that taper and, and kind of composition of the rifle. So uh, 6.5 PRC, 1.8 twist, 26 inches finished. If we come on out the barrel here, um, I have a Hawkins Precision tank break. So as you can see, it's seamless. However, um, you know, that does mean it's got to be timed. So I had Hawkins send this off to boring for me when I had my barrel done. Boring did a great job making it seamless. The little bit of seam you see there is that I have actually popped it off once before that it looked like one straight piece. So um, I've really found that break. I mean, obviously a 12 pound gun is going to have more recoil than a 20 pound gun, but that break has really uh, made this gun quite a pleasure to shoot. Um, so that takes care of that break. Can't recommend Hawkins enough. And especially for the lightweight, obviously the fluting's a lightweight. Um, the smaller taper is lightweight. That's like a two ounce break and very effective for the weight you get. Um, so if we come into the stock, so what stock is this? This is the Gray Bow Phoenix um, in a Remington 700 short action. It is very light, comes with some cool features like the bubble level. But the main thing is for the adjustability, you can see here I've got all the spacers in here because I have a 14 inch, 14 and a half inch length of pull. Um, those spacers don't really add any weight and are very effective as well as the adjustable cheek without really getting that added weight that you get for some of the hardware and some of the other standard um, hunting stocks, you know, your McMillan's, your Manners, etc. So I really like what they did to design fully adjustability without really sacrificing and adding a whole bunch of weight. So love the stock, love the feel. The channel is pretty wide. You can put you know, if you're gonna have you a big old bull barrel contoured carbon fiber, it'll fit in there. Um, or, you know, my, my barrel does without too much issue. Uh, as far as the Arca rail, I go full Arca on pretty much everything, including my hunting. So this is the Henderson Precision. I believe it's the 10 incher. It may be the 12 incher. I'm, I'm not recalling off the top of my head, but either way, the Henderson Precision goes pretty great, pretty universal. You can add, you can either attach it to M-Lock or this, uh, this stock or normal stocks, whatever. So the Henderson Precision rails I've found to be uh, really good for me as well. So another common theme you'll see from some of my videos, the MDT Skypod. This is the single pull. Why do I go with a single pull instead of the double pull? Once again, it's supposed to be a semi-lightweight. I'm not gonna sacrifice functionality for weight, but it is supposed to be kind of lightweight. So this is the single pull Skypod. Gives me tons of height. Um, if you wanna know how much height and width and stuff, you can go check out a video literally called what are the differences in sky pods um, and I explained that there but this this saves me a few ounces over the double pull and if I need to get any higher I very rarely go hunting for especially western big game but even southern big game uh, without my tripod my tripods are arca and I can you know hook into my tripods for taller shots this gives me just a ton of versatility for what I do need from a bipod shot without really adding the weight of a double or triple pull bipod so uh, if we round it out and we go to the optics, once again, common theme, my Hawkins Precision Ultralight uh, 
rings. So, you know, especially for a hunting gun, this is exactly what they're made for. Once again, built in level, very light, very reliable. Uh, can't recommend Hawkins enough. And then I rounded out with my scope. So what is the scope? Uh, this is the Burris XTR3 with the SCR mill reticle. That is the original SCR, not the SCR2. Um, and the scope is a three to 18 by 50. Why did I do that? If you notice the length of this scope is pretty short, um, you know, nice and compact for a hunting gun. Uh, the three to eight or the XTR threes have capped windage or exposed windage, which I love. You can go to either option. Uh, but then the three to 18 obviously saves me some weight by being a 50 instead of a 56 millimeter bell, as well as just being more compact. And then that reticle, the SCR2 reticle, I will never claim as a hunting reticle. There's a lot going on. It's really fine. You can't really see it down at the three, the, you know, the three power or so. But the, the SCR original, honestly, it didn't have enough to be the greatest, let's say, race reticle in the world for competition. But for hunting, I really love it. If you needed to use your um, holdovers, you still can. There's still plenty of stadia in each direction to be able to allow precise holdovers but it's much cleaner as well as much thicker just a, a good bit thicker where you can see it on lower power so i get all the quality of the glass of the xtr3 that i like um, except in a more compact version and with the reticle that i like so once again um, the purpose of these videos was to uh, help you out as uh, somebody viewing this like hey how does this guy this reviewer for lrt choose his gear I'm not telling you it's the best. I'm just giving you some features that I look for, um, that I choose, and how that may help help you with your you know your build outs, your buying decisions down the road. So I hope that helps. I hope you like it. Um, if there's any other builds you'd want us to talk about, be sure to comment that below, um, or go to our uh, you know our Facebook group. We got a Facebook group called Long Range Tactics Official Group. It's a separate from our page. I recommend you follow both. Uh, but make sure you follow those um, and you can ask all sorts of questions. Make sure you to subscribe to this channel um, and we'll have more of these coming. And I sure hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helped uh, and I hope you come back and I hope to see you at the range. Have a good one.